Guys, what's going to be different when Stipe fights Francis in a couple weeks? And I would love to hear the varying opinions on that. And I know that there are definitely strong opinions that the fight is going to be different. And I know that because Francis is a three to one favorite to beat Stipe. Now, I realize that line keeps changing. It goes from two to two and a half to three. When I'm talking to you right now, it's three. And that may change back down, but I don't know that it's ever going to get better to two to one. And this is a fight that we've already seen. 25 minutes. Nobody got caught. This isn't a wrestling match where a guy catches a guy on his shoulders. This isn't a submission match where a guy finds an arm bar. This was straight up 25 minutes, me versus you, rinse and repeat, go to your corner, talk to your coach, I'll come back, let's do the same, let's do it over and over again. It was just the same fight. Now, I would have to ask the question, what's going to be different? And while I ask the question, I already know what the response is going to be, which is Francis isn't going to take be taken down. Oh, and by the way, he's going to land a punch and knock out Stipe. I mean, that is a lot to bet on. Now, that's why we call it a gamble, right? You deserve your money, though. If you're betting on Francis, you deserve your money. But if you're betting on Francis, you'd also better be going on the odds with the house here and taking the knockout. I don't know that he has any other way to win. And for anybody that is predicting Ngannou, and that's the majority of you, you must concede to me that I'm right. I mean, I'm guessing, I'm predicting, but you must be thinking that Francis is going to knock him out. Do I have that right? Okay. There's a lot on that. I would just want a little bit more. If I were going to bet, and this is why I've been surprised. I'm not questioning anybody. This is between those two, and who's worse at picking and predicting a fight than me, right? I'm so bad at it that people have even called it a chael curse. Oh, chael picked you to win. Now you're really going to lose. Because I, I get it that I get a I get them wrong a lot. I just don't know if you're going to part with your money, if that is enough to hang your hat on. Francis is going to stop the takedown. Oh, and by the way, somewhere in between stopping those takedowns, he's going to land a punch that's going to put the big guy down in Stipe. I would just need a little more backup. Okay, let me concede that what has already happened five of five rounds, which is Francis gets taken down. Let me concede that that happens. Can Francis dig an underhook, get to the opposite hip, and get back to his feet? That would be different than the last fight. That would then give Francis more time to land that punch and find that knockout. It would also make Stipe question, is the squeeze worth the juice in terms of taking Francis down? One thing you'll never do as a wrestler is take a guy down if you don't have a reasonable belief that you can keep him there because it's not worth it. The energy exerted for a takedown, you must have some time on top to refuel. You must. If you have a takedown stuffed, the energy that goes through, now you're stuck in the same spot, which is on the feet, but now you have less gas, right? It's just one of these things that if there was an answer that steep, that Francis was going to scramble and get back to his feet. And I read something as early as today, and it just, it was just a red flag for me, right? Am I splitting hairs here? Yeah, for sure. I fully admit that I'm making a little something out of very little information, but it came out that Francis is going to put Usman in his corner. Now, if that was a countryman or a brethren or a friend, I'm not even talking to you guys about it, but they went a little bit further and they said they're going to put Usman in the corner to help with the wrestling. Now, that was a red flag. If that is just talk, fine. But if that is a reality or one that they hope to make a reality, I would have follow-up questions such as, when were you guys ever in the room training together? Because it's been documented that Francis is in Las Vegas and it's been documented that Usman trained in Colorado. So if you two weren't in the room together, to have a level of communication together in a fight that's already happened once and wrestling was the key component, which would make Usman, if he's the new wrestling guy, a key corner man. I would also wonder if so little has been done in the wrestling department over the last three years, if so little has been done and such a lack of understanding exists that you believe just having a good eye on the match could impact it. It's a very big red flag for me. If I'm to take this statement literal, which I am, I'm choosing to take it literal that Usman will be in the corner to be the wrestling coach. 
That would show such a lack of understanding, respect, and appreciation for the sport of wrestling. It just simply doesn't work that way. You could have the greatest mind that you wanted to. If he's yelling instruction to you and you do not physically have the capability, the balance, the timing, the endurance, the lactic acid, and most over the muscle memory to do it, it wouldn't make any bit of difference. And I don't know that that is unique to wrestling. I think that that would be true in any element of fight. I don't know that you could just bring in a great kickboxing coach. Okay, great. I got to deal with a kickboxer. Tyrone Spong. In fact, Tyrone Spong and Ray Seffo are going to be in my corner. Okay, great. I got that part solved. Now, I don't think that it works that way in anything, but I can tell you for sure it most certainly does not in wrestling. And then you have two guys together. I don't think it worked together. I just don't know when they would have done it. And I talk to guys that see Francis in the room on a very regular basis, who, by the way, say fantastic things about him. Apparently, Francis is on all cylinders right now. And apparently, Francis is extremely hard to take down right now. I'm hearing very good things. But if the lack of understanding is the same as the lack of understanding was the first time that these two fought, which would be evident of the fact that the principal in this story, who is Francis Ngano, believes that he can just hear instruction and in his mind do it not only on the fly, it's after the fact, right? Usman's never going to tell him to get an underhook and get his opposite hip down if he hasn't been taken down in the first place. Usman's never going to tell him to turn to his hip and straight arm him to start to scramble and shrimp out if he hasn't been put in a precarious position to start with. So not only is he going to get information that perhaps he doesn't understand from a guy who it seems he hasn't worked with, he's going to get it after the fact, okay? If somebody hands you the bullets after the gunfight, you kind of go, well, gee, thanks a lot, but where were you a minute ago? It's just one of these things that for me was a little bit of a red flag, almost like a little bit of inside information. If the information that we have, if the information we have is true. Now, this could have been a statement made by somebody to tip their hat to Kamara Usman and show him a level of respect. It could have been as simple as that. But if, in fact, this is to be taken at face value, this is massive, massive insight into the changes or lack thereof by Team Francis.